to order here. Um, 3.30 p.m. February 16th. Our regular chairman, Colby Schellinger, is sick today um, and on medication. And also Supervisor Ponza could not make it today. So there are three of us here today. So we have our quorum. Yeah. Uh, first item, call to order, of course. Uh, second item, approval of the January 18th, 2023 PA <laughs> committee minutes. Since we don't have three members here that were at that meeting, we're going to postpone approval of those until next month. And I'll explain why that is in about a minute. Um, so we'll move on to item three, public forum discussion limited to items listed on the agenda. Does anyone have anything that they'd like to discuss that's on the agenda, either here in person or on Zoom? Nobody on Zoom? That wants to talk. We two people on Zoom. Uh, Winnebago Citizen and Stu Finner. All right, we'll move on to number four. Introduction to new committee member supervisor Tom Swan. I don't know if everyone knows Tom. That's Mr. Tom Swan, and he is new, replacing Mr. Norton as our new supervisor on our field. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Uh, discussion and vote on new committee secretary. Yes, we could do that today. And what the? I'll nominate uh, Morris Cox. I'll second her. Um, I'll be nominated. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot nominate yourself. <laughs> Any other? No vote. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. All right, you are the new secretary. Number six, finance report, Doug. Okay. <clears throat> uh, since the last meeting, <clears throat> we have had uh, more of the information uh, postponed or posted to the uh, the December of uh, 2022 uh, income statement. So. Uh, we looked down through the revenues, um, even though we should be at 100%. Uh, overall total, we're at 94%. And, and with the census, how it was running, that's actually uh, a pretty high percentage of revenue for us. Um, we did get a, uh, a pretty sizable uh, Title 19, the first line, and we had a pretty sizable adjustment when they redid the rates, so that actually helped us out quite a much, uh, quite a bit. <clears throat> yeah. Look at the second page. Our total labor was only at eighty-one percent um, of the budget. Um, so uh, with a lower census and lower staffing. Um, it, would be um, fitting that the expenses, expenses for labor are going to be lower. Um, travel, that's 98%. Uh, we used up almost all of it. <clears throat> uh, capital. <clears throat> and if you look at the <clears throat> remaining budget amounts, <clears throat> there's $256,000. Uh, most of that is uh, having to do with the uh, dishwasher, $130,000 there, uh, and then the remaining in the equipment area is for the, um, the water heaters. <clears throat> and the amount that's in the improvements, uh, we had carried over $28,000 for screening porches on the outside uh, porches. And uh, 
we haven't been able to find a contractor that that we can actually get for us enough folks to do a decent a decent uh, bid. So we're going to carry that and hoping to carry that money over next year to complete that. We have one one porch that's fully enclosed right now, and it actually works pretty good in the summertime for the residents to go out and they can kind of sit outside and not be carried away by bugs. <clears throat> um, further on down, um, I'm just going through the different categories. Our office supply is 83%. Uh, operating is 85. Repairs and maintenance, 74. Utilities were, <clears throat> and, we, and we knew that was going to be a little bit close. We're at 104% there. Um, and it was mostly due to heat. They, they ended up uh, hitting us a little higher with uh, with the utility rates towards the end of the year. So, and we have budgeted uh, more for next year. So, we should be okay there. Our contracted services were at eighty eight percent, and the majority of that is our. Uh, temporary uh, help for the, for the nursing staff. Um, further down, uh, that's pretty much about it. <clears throat> uh, if you look at our deficit, we're at uh, 1.2 million. We actually projected of uh, using uh, 3,718,000. So we're actually better than what we projected at this point in time. Um, by two million uh, fifty thousand or two two million fifty thousand um, dollars, and I know there's they're not quite done with all of the the entries for uh, for the year uh, in finance. So, <clears throat> some payroll adjustments still to do based on the Gatsby entries, so that will that will make a difference, <clears throat> and. So from what I've seen based on based on the past, it, that number will probably get closer to zero than, than going the other way. <clears throat> what would you attribute the improved performance to them? Um, <clears throat> well, we had uh, a big adjustment in the Medicare rates. Right. That that's a big part of it, and then also <clears throat> we had projected our SP money, which is in the line called non-operating grants, uh, about two thirds of the way down, uh, forty-eight one hundred two, and we had budgeted uh, one point nine million, and we actually got in two point eight, so that was almost another million higher than we had budgeted. Okay, so. I have a question on Title 19. Title 19, yep. Oh, <clears throat> and maybe I don't know the difference, but I think I do. Medicaid Title 19. Do they do increases for nursing homes on a yearly basis? Yeah. Is there going to be an increase? Yep. So yep. they are increasing what they're paying for the yep. 19? <clears throat> yes. Okay. And, they, and they've actually, we, in the first part of the year, we submit a Medicaid cost report. Okay. They go through and they audit that. And then based on what we put in there for our expenditure numbers, they go through and make a calculation and and then they adjust their rates based on that. So you already know what they're going to pay? Yes. They've yeah. already given us the final, okay. the final numbers. It's up. And then they actually... And their year starts in July. Okay. So they've actually gone back and adjusted. And that's what a back. bunch of the adjustments were. Okay. <clears throat> What's for that? So, so we're good on that, that side. Yep. Okay. I have a question. I'm not sure if I should ask this or an open forum, but just went out of my own satisfaction. Did you, have you got this understood now about on the ARPA money and that money that thought was going to go into your thing and be pulled back out. Is that all straightened out now? Or? I, 
<clears throat> from, from what I've what I've gotten from the, uh, the state auditor, um, the calculation is based just only on expenditures. I didn't get that until sometime a couple of days after the board okay. meeting, but it is, it is only based on the expenditures. Okay, so it, it went to having it back. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure everyone yeah. was straight on that. Thank which is you. really beneficial to the Dane County. Uh, yeah. Significant mm -hmm. Yeah, even on that that benefit, a lot of a lot of counties actually lost money. Okay. Um, some some you know places that are larger than us <clears throat> took took a cut. So I think we got mm -hmm. lucky on that calculation. Yeah. Um, yep. And that, that's more for the SP money down under, underneath. Um, <clears throat> that's that's the calculation they do for that too. Yeah. Thank you. And then also I included uh, January's uh, report also. <laughs> so <clears throat> for the first month, uh, it, January isn't really closed. Finance has been closed January, like they normally close later in the later in the year because 2022 is still open. So they don't do a formal close until they actually close 2022. But based on based on our revenues and uh, what we spent, this is pretty accurate as far as January goes. Um, so for revenue, we're sitting total at about 7.85%, uh, for the first month of the year, we should be at about 8%. So we're running a pretty consistently, uh, even there. Um, you look at our wages where our wages are running at 6.2%. Um, so we're, we're trailing our revenue, which is still a good thing. Uh, travel, we haven't really spent anything yet because all the conferences haven't been uh, signed up for and gone to yet. Uh, capital, uh, a lot of the, there's nothing that shows up in there right now. Um, a lot of that is going to be dependent on the carryovers and and the PO carryovers. When, when the system closes, they'll automatically roll in for the PO carryovers. Once the board approves the 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 other carry the type two carryovers, then all of those costs will show up in the budgeting area. So that's why this this area is blank right now. Um, and then uh, going through the rest of it, it's uh, we're a little higher on. Equipment repairs, but uh, we had one one big repair that came through there. Uh, but overall, <clears throat> our total expenses are at five point seven percent, so we're underneath our revenues. So <clears throat> uh, we had we had applied uh, one point nine million dollars in the budget uh, for twenty twenty three. We're sitting. At a, a profit of two hundred fifteen thousand right now, so right now we're three hundred eighty thousand dollars of uh, ahead of what, what we had projected in our budget. So all in all, pretty good. Three hundred eighty. Three hundred eighty thousand. Where can you see that variance? Uh, should be on the last page. Okay. Um, um, expenses total. Uh, the expenses total are 1.1 uh, 1 million. Yeah. Then below that, you'll have the deficit or uh, oh, I see it. profit, I see it. 215. The 112 of the 1.9 million is the 165. Yeah. So getting those two together, you get the three. Maybe you can answer this. Can you hear the financial group? 
I think we're out for bids on at least one of those two projects, either the water heaters or the dishwasher. Dishwasher is, is they were just walking through today, uh, talking with uh, uh, Paul Rothy about how they're going to walk or move the pieces into the, so, into we the have building. A contract. so we have a contract with for the dishwasher. Okay. I know the uh, water heater has been out for bid. I have not heard okay. from Laura. I just recently saw it advertised. For yeah. They were in today for the bids for the water heaters. Oh, and then the do... That was the walkthrough. Yeah, that, the was walk the that was the walkthrough for the water heater today. So but moving. it's moving along. Yeah. The dishwasher, once we actually sign the contract, there's a 16 week lead time. So we're looking probably end ish of uh, um, I think April okay. before that's actually going to be ready to go. Okay. Because they have to build it yet. Does anybody have Mr. Swan and Mr. Fox? Do you have any other questions? Right now, uh, did they give you any kind of timeline for the water heater? Water heaters? No, that'll be based on when when the bids all come in. I think the bids are due this next week. Right. If they had the walk, if they had the walk through today, bids will be due next week, and then they'll go through and approve one of them. Thank you. Bids are due March second for the water heater. March second. Mm -hmm. The bid. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make a request. You can make a request. Yeah. Is there a way that we can move discussion item eight in front of seven? Yeah. I'm trying to respect that uh, Director Alex. Uh, he's got to put it. He's going to make it to here. I know. Yeah. It's just crossed. The the big of Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. So we're going to come back to the other one. Right? <laughs> we'll accommodate. We like to do that. Okay. We'll move to number eight. Uh, discussion, retention, and recruitment efforts. Staff turnover rate. You want to talk about that? So staff turnover rates for uh, January specifically uh, was 2%. We had four resignations uh, this month. Sorry. Not retirements, resignations. Um. Well, yeah. Yes, we did have some retirements. We had Tim. He was our lead activity specialist. He was with us for thirty-one years. Oh wow. He retired. Um. And then we also had a promotion. Our activity specialist moved into a supervisor role, so took his position. And then. Uh, we did have some status changes as well, too. Yeah. So well, if we had 2% February, yeah. February, if we had 2% turnover, well, how are we doing on the other side of it coming in? We hired two staff this month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I have eight or nine that are on my desk when I'm starting um, between next week and the 1st of March. Yeah, some are CNA, some are hospitality. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't know if anybody said it more like Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we'll move on to tuition reimbursement program. Then. Yeah, you know, I set up a couple of things. Um, and I will go over this. Is is yes, this is you know something I want to take a look at. Um, but I definitely want to make sure that we're we're taking the time to take a look at this countywide. Um, this is something I think uh, personnel and finance is going to have to take a look at pretty deeply uh, with a bunch of a bunch of different departments. Um, but one of the things you know, especially coming back from from NACO and and some of the things that we've kind of looked in is is how do we really maximize some of the benefits that already exist. Uh, for instance, the, the, the HERO Act, um, how do we do a better job of letting people know that when you work in public service, um, you can have your, your tuition forgiven? Um, we actually did kind of a, an email blast of that, and we saw a lot more of that paperwork come through HR this year, right? We filed a lot of things to actually get some of that tu uh, tuition uh, forgiven for employees that have been here for a long time. 
Um, we have instructed the HR now to, to put some information on that on an on a incoming uh, employee packet um, to let people know. And then how do we do a better job of of seeing the resources that are already out there? Because that doesn't that doesn't come off our our tax you know, we don't. That's that's a benefit that's already offered out there. We don't have to to pay for. So, how many of those um, can we leverage? Um, out at NACO, there's a. They just launched a new voluntary benefits program where we kind of met with them, uh, high level to see kind of some of some of those things that are going to be in there um, that we could take advantage of because we're a NACO member. Um, so we kind of met with them while we're out in DC, and we're going to get some follow up to see exactly uh, what that entails and and. How much more we can we can get from that? To uh, the one theme I would say in Vanco is the federal government has a lot, a lot of money. Whether you whether you agree with it or not, uh, it's printed and it's out there. Um, and if we don't go after it and grab some of it, um, your usual suspects are going to, aka New York, Chicago, San Francisco. Oh. They're they're going to take this money. It's it's not going to get unprinted. So I think we got to do a, a good job of, of leveraging some of those funds in there. Um, other than that, I think uh, as far as tuition reimbursement, you know, I'd, I'd like to defer this a little bit to Mark of, of what he's thinking a little bit more uh, as a countywide approach. Um, not not that we don't want to dig into this heavy, um, but I just want to make sure in, in the past um, we've seen to have departments go out for something. Uh, that they need specific to them, and then it causes compression on other departments. We administration kind of wants to stop those those turf wars, if you would, and see if there's something a comprehensive approach that we could do countywide, so we can do this together as a team. So, in addition to the uh, Heroes Act that John talked about, that's a relatively recent act. There's also the public student loan. Um, forgiveness program that's been in effect for decades. And, you know, I can tell you that we have many employees each year that fill out paperwork, send it to HR, we fill out on their behalf. And depending on, um, you know, that's a program where depending on the type of student loan that they have, um, they can have a certain percentage of it forgiven based on um, what field they work in, if they work for a certain nonprofit, government employer, things like that. So there are some programs out there that um, our employees are currently using. And like John said, those aren't coming off the tax levy. Those are ones that we're utilizing to the federal government. As we talk about if we're going to do something um, locally within county government, one of the things we've talked about is trying to come up with a policy, you know, a broad policy for departments so that um, it's not department specific. Uh, you know, individual departments may have to, to budget um, for it, but we want to have a framework so that it's not just one department and not another. We want to be able to roll something out um, where it's really open to any, any company employee or at least there's a certain framework where whatever process, whether it's an application process, however it would work. Um, we're also taking a look, I mean, this is a piece of, you know, right now we're working on the compensation study, we're working on wages. Following that, um, you know, we'll have different things like adjustments to the merit pay plan. Um, but what you heard Dr. McGrath talk about in her presentation in January, where other benefits, things like, you know, time off and some of the other things that we offer as a county. And really tuition reimbursement could potentially be another one of those pieces that go in. Um, obviously we only have, um, you know, the pie is only so big, so we'll have to determine um, which areas we focus on and how much is available, um, but it certainly might be part of one of the solutions of attracting and trying to retain staff. Um, I also just want to point out it's not tuition reimbursement per se, but the county as a whole has a history of developing staff, um, sending them to training, getting necessary certifications. Um, you know, one example, I mean, Parkview, we hire people, we 
provide CNA training, get them their CNA certification. Sheriff's office, they'll hire deputies for either corrections or patrol. If they're not certified, they send them for that certification. Uh, while those employees are at those types of trainings, we're not only bearing the cost and providing that training for the individual, but of course we're also paying their wages. That's their job while they're going to that. So um, providing that type of on-the-job training to give our people the skills necessary to be successful. Uh, we've been doing some of that already. It doesn't mean we can't expand or look at other ways we can do it, but I don't want you to think that you know, we're not providing some of those types of services. We have a lot of, and I don't know what a lot is, but this public student loan forgiveness, mm -hmm. that could come from any department, as you said. It could be somebody getting Correct. a business degree, somebody out here getting a nursing degree. Do you have a fair amount of employees that know about that? Well, that's one of the, well, we do because we have quite a few, but that's one of the things John and I have been speaking about is obviously the ones who are currently applying and sending the paperwork to us. I mean, of course, they know about it mm -hmm. as we're getting the paperwork. What we don't necessarily know is how many other employees do we have that may not be aware of it. And so what are the things that we can do to try to educate um, our employees and let them know some of these programs that are available so that if they are participating, they should be. Because I'm thinking a lot of employees don't know this. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of employees out here who I would think would benefit from that and should at least apply for it. But I, I've never heard about this before. So And some of it, I think, may depend on the type of federal loan that you're getting. I mean, okay. for instance, I know that the um, Perkins loan and a Pell Grant those are two types of federal student loan that programs qualify. that qualify. I don't know that everyone will, but um, there are certain rules of them, so it's not necessarily a blank. It will apply to everything. Is but, the application terribly complicated no, to fill out? No, not at all. So I have a question. Do the, does the public at large know about this benefit? So what I'm saying is a lot of what I've noticed in looking at jobs, in job search is that bonuses are offered for nursing in the in the market. I've seen bonuses as high as ten thousand dollars offered for an RN. So if you know if this benefit were made public as you know something that could be used to compete with that in attracting employees for Parkview, wouldn't that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. To yeah. market that up against, because if you can't offer a cash bonus, which I'm assuming you can't because you haven't, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, those are all things that, I mean, in theory, we could, but again, it's trying to determine right. where is our biggest reach. But at least you could get, you know, that offering out into the public domain and then you know, run up against these cash bonuses and say, hey, you know, these this is potentially thousands of dollars of reimbursement. How much are we talking about here for these grants? What is it, you know, well, is there a maximum annually that you can apply for? I'll tell you from my own experience, um, it was a certain percentage of the loan that was forgiven. Okay. And I believe it was over the course of five years, All right. the entire loan was forgiven. Certain percent. Okay, well, it seems to me that runs up pretty well against us, even the highest bonus out there. Keep in mind, though, that at least at the time, and it was a long time ago, but when when I graduated college, um, you know, again, there were certain loans that did qualify, mm -hmm. and some may not have. I had ones that qualified mm -hmm. in my case. Mm -hmm. So, I, think it's I mean, 10 years now. Okay. You have to work in public service or nonprofit for 10 years. But I okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's changed in the last few decades. But if you do four years at one nonprofit and then come to the county, correct. Well, it's all cumulative. Right. Mm -hmm. And to your point, Tom, we certainly, um, I mean, that's not something that we include right now on our job posting. Yeah. Or things, uh, but that's absolutely something that, that we could, yeah. could incorporate into that. And as for trying to get the word out, you have started a newsletter, more or less, from your office. Mm -hmm. 
would be no reason why you couldn't add a blurb in there about how we have certain enrollment practices for college or for uh, vocational school or whatever. Right. And this is how we handle the prepayment and the payment after you've been an employee here for so many months or so many years. I know when I was with at and I went to school for a period of time and that was all handled in in house. But then when I came out and I decided I wanted to take a certification in voice and data, okay, I contacted the personnel, told them what I was going to do, and they told me, well, we get, we've got a, a forgiveness of at least half of what you put in, but you have to have you know, a C or B or whatever, and you have to stay with us. You can't just take it and run. And that that was a program that lasted for almost two years. And then uh, I got paid back you know, at the end of the time, okay, after I completed the course. That that would be you know something you could handle in a newsletter or whatever. You know, allowing people to know that there's a program out there. I think more focus to what we here at Parkview have as an ancillary building that we want to put into action and that you want to be able to have courses that support the CNA program and support other, perhaps other types of uh, coursework that you, know, you would eventually evolve into, but it would be focused on the people and employees here. And if other people wanted to get involved and come to you know, first aid course or whatever else, they could do that as well. But that would be advertised as well through whatever program you have. Yeah, and I think and that's exactly right. We we did mention this benefit in one of our, our emails that went out and HR saw an uptick on applications when we did that. Um, that those are things that we, we want to do and make sure that we're doing our job of getting out there and figuring out what programs are available. If this is one thing that was out there that we didn't really know about and we're taking advantage of, what else is there uh, that we don't know about that we're taking advantage of? Um, and it's, you know, as, as far as uh, the ancillary building and figure out what class they go to. Um, I, I think that's ex I think that's exciting and, and forward looking is one of the reasons that Lindsay got hired. You know, when she came in and her interview, she was really uh, she was open to new ideas and open to new things that that could come to make Parkview better. And I'm very glad that she applied. Um, and you're going on what year five now at Parkview? <laughs> so, <laughs> five months. Right, five months. So, you know, she's she's getting her footing down and she's starting to understand the lay of the land. And she's she's had a lot of good questions on why we do this and why we do that. And and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing some of the solutions that she's gonna come and discuss with HR and things that we should be able to do. And and hopefully we bring some really good proposals to you to this committee. Uh, in the near future, um, whatever that means. Um, and, and I'm really confident in the work that she's gonna do. I, I think she went with uh, Director Topol, correct? Uh, yeah. Up to, uh, to Green Bay. Um, they've gone to look at other facilities that are government run to see what they're doing, what's doing well. Um, so I'm, I'm excited at some of the things she'll bring and, I, and I'm sure um, some of those things will be on her radar. I'm happy to hear all of this going on, but I just don't want Winnebago County to be the training site and have them leave right after. And that's what it's been with a lot of them. Not so much this, because I'm not so involved with this group, but other ones, when we say the highway department or whatever, mm -hmm. it's like we train them, they go to some other place. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if there's any way that can be sewed in. We'll go ahead and we train you, but you'll have to stay here for a certain length of time in order to get all your money or whatever back. It's easy to do that when it's our money. Right, that's what I'm saying. 
but then you know that's that's the risk and then you have to figure out the budget for that uh, mark to you when it comes to a point of giving away this kind of a program any anything that you can do to bridge that over a period of time would help keep those people interested in staying with the program and staying at work you know you get paid after you get you know uh, get to the six month or you get paid after you get you know your grades or whatever it, so right because you want to tie it in as an incentive mm -hmm. that's your point and tom's point about you know it's not just from a recruiting standpoint it's also about a retention standpoint and making sure that we're seeing some value from the incentive that we're providing and they should know that right at the outset that this is the incentive for you to stay working here if you choose to leave we're going to take your certification away from you or whatever i don't know but uh, the incentive would be to stay here I could add something. I, I've been a park for a long time. And years ago, we did the um, predating my time. I'm here 25 years. They had run CNA classes. Actually, they're not CNA, but LPN classes right at Parkview. But then we had issues with instructors. So that phased out. And then in my time, we had the tuition assistance program. We have some of our managers now who were in that program. Um, took advantage of it. We gave them up to $1,500 a calendar year to use for tuition. Um, and we had a small handful of people take advantage of it, but we made them stay. They had to present their grades. We saw that they had a C or better. And um, I, I think we've had some good results from that. So I'm anxious but, to see what we can do. But people stayed around. They worked a, long, a longer period of time than five years or whatever. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Not all. But some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, I think it's that's, worthwhile. That's important that you build the incentive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Quick question. Didn't you, Haley, didn't you just mention that there's a 10 year? For the federal program, um, yeah, they let they usually let people know, especially in social work, because we tend to work in public service or nonprofit, okay. that that program's out there. Okay. Um, but I believe it's ten years. You have to work in public service or nonprofit for ten years now, and then they're a hundred percent forgiven, as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. And would you be listing which grants this would apply to in the offerings? You know, so that they would know the potential employees would know. Which grants could be forgiven and which wouldn't? Well, we'd work up some type of language to include the posting, such as, you know, that we're a PSLF qualifying, you know, employer or something, and, you know, you know, maybe site specific grants, depending on how detailed, right. you know, it is. But um, I certainly think highlighting that. Um, and I had done a lot of the hiring for human services. And working with them so i was seeing a lot of the social work applications come through um and those were the, most of the ones i saw but it's not limited you know to social workers um but yes we would have some type of information to, to steer them and then one other question do the competitors that offer these large bonuses also offer tuition reimbursement thank you so that's trouble that you'd run up against there right you can get that benefit somewhere else too. Well, keep in mind that um, at least for the federal, this particular program, it's got to be a nonprofit or right. you know government. Right. So again, it depends you know who we're competing against, but it's not always um, you know there's more than tuition reimbursement. There's more than um, you know a hiring bonus. I mean, there's so many variables what we can do to attract and retain people you know certainly um you know when we take a look at starting wages um you know what's our hiring range for positions because i mean that's a natural thing that people will look at first um but then there's other things that we try to uh, use to our advantage Wisconsin retirement system for instance uh, now granted sometimes we're hiring people that uh, they're very early in their career they may not necessarily see that as a value or they may not completely understand the value that that brings. Um, but those are things that 
you know, yes, directly competing with the Brewster's Village and Adegini County or Fond du Lac, they're offering the same thing, obviously, because they're a government employer. But all the private employers, that's not an option for them. You know, so there are things that we do offer that others don't or can't. And likewise, there's things that other employers offer that we right now don't or can't. Um, and that's, again, where it comes back to what are the things that we think will provide the greatest incentive, the largest scope, you know, across the board. And um, sometimes that may be how we offer vacation. Some of it may be what we offer for this, or that, you know, or the other thing. And that's really one of the challenges. Um, what is that right mix? And what can we offer? And how can we be as competitive as we can be? Yeah. Um, I can add just one thing. We're talking a lot of monetary things, but something that's not monetary is maybe they need a special schedule that maybe another employer can't offer. Our nursing department has gone above and beyond mm -hmm. trying to work with our students to fit their work time in between classes or what have you um, to fit their needs too. So that, that goes a long way too. It doesn't cost us anything. Mm -hmm. I think Those the biggest thing too is this are kind of touchy because here's an example. And it, to me, it's wasting money. A CBL driver goes to work for a company after 90 days, he gets a big, and I mean a big paycheck. He leaves and he figures if I do this six times a year and I get 10 grand a pop, I'm coming out really ahead and he's still working. I don't think we should get into something like that. Or when these bonuses first came out, uh, I want to say hot and heavy two, three years ago, I got a short offered him and people stayed signing bonus or alliance laundry. I signed all the paperwork. Where's my $5,000? And they got themselves in trouble as employers because it was signing and Joel Smith thought that meant when I signed the paperwork. So they had to regroup on that. So a lot of money was paid out wastefully, I'm gonna put it that way. So those signing bonuses can be kind of, kind of tricky. And, and philosophically, with some of those, if some of those same dollars were instead were built into, say, base wages, well, then the incentive is you're going to earn that same amount of money. But number one, you've got to stay with us and you've got to work to earn it instead of, you know, just lump sum. I, I think there's times where those programs, you know, can be effective. Mm -hmm. But I think, Again, we've got to try as much as possible to look at the largest picture we can before we necessarily focus on one thing. And our solution really, I don't believe is going to be, there's no one silver bullet that's going to solve it for us. And it's trying to see what scope, because what attracts one candidate to us may not necessarily attract a different candidate. So how can we make these positions um, attract the greatest breadth of candidates that we have out there. And you know, not just for Parkview, but I know all departments, one of the things that John's really focused on um, has been culture. You know, what what type of employee, employer are we as far as what type of culture do our employees come into? Are we the type of company that people um, find refreshing? and they haven't had an experience like that? Or do they come in and decide, you know, I don't know that I really want to stay here compared to somewhere else. And there's different different things. I mean, different departments are in probably a different um, continuum of where that culture is. Um, and there's always going to be some highs and lows and difficulties. But again, big picture wise, you know, are we supportive of our, our employees? Are we communicating with our employees? Um, do we have supervisors that, um, you know, know their employees more than just a name on a schedule? You know, what are some of those things that we can do? Again, to Peg's point, some of those things are free. They don't cost anything. I've heard John say at least probably a dozen times, you know, there's no cost for please and thank yous. You know, so how do we instill some of that within our work? And not just from supervisors down, but as employees, as we work together with each other, and those are some of the things I know we've been 
passionate about trying to really work on. In the community out here, because I have an advocate, as you know, this place, the community out here before COVID was excellent. People thought, and, and the family part of it came into play during COVID when it was shut down. The employees became the family for the residents. Thank God we had them. But there was such a community out here. It's indescribably just great. I mean, people would go, I can't, I want my family, my member to go to Parkview. I know they'll be well taken care of. They'll be fed well. There'll be a community volunteering with all the activities that we had out here. It was superb. And then COVID came. Things changed. But never have I heard like seriously bad things about her. And we're going through a hard time right now because of the employee situation, but there's still people wanting to come here. So that's that department. Mm -hmm. um, and and you have the the age of your employees that are applying, like you said. I'm 21. I don't care about health insurance because I'm never going to get sick. Put it on my paycheck. I don't care about the retirement because somebody will take care of me down the line. I want that on the paycheck. I think that's a hard day for anybody as an employer. So not two people coming in are going to be alike. But the atmosphere out here is a good selling point. And I think it'll come back. We get more people out here. They'll be fine. But what what retains people? If you pay their tuition off and you don't have some length of time, they'll leave. The, the young folks will jump from, you know, from place to place just because. So I don't know if you can 100% keep everybody, but it needs to be better than it has been. So, and if we keep them at least while they're in school, mm -hmm. again, at least that's helping the immediate need of right now. And it can't just be the college degree. It has to be the technical school because not everybody is going to go to college. So I, I, I really say technical college too because there's tuition being paid there. So I, I think you guys understand what I'm saying. Not just... And it can't just be part of you. I get that, but we seem to have the biggest need right now. So, but I do understand your point that it's got to be all in comes. I mean, the biggest thing is how do we attract these kind of workers? They're entry level CNAs. Nobody wants to be a, a lifer right. CNA anymore, yeah. right? Especially the young people. And that's who we have to attract. Mm -hmm to be at Parkville. And like you said, they don't care about the health insurance. They can stay in their parents' health insurance until they're 26, yeah. Two um, meetings ago, we got into exit, talking about exit interviews. Yes. People were leaving and whatever. Why did they leave? Whatever. I don't know if that's gained any ground at all in, in the things that you do, but if, if in fact there was a mentoring program that the mentors could pull that sort of information out of who they're mentoring and get that kind of information down somewhere where it can be researched or whatever, but it's not as important as the mentoring side of We don't have here a good, solid mentoring program. And I've talked to people at the highway department and they called me and we talked for half an hour or whatever. Talked about what the <clears throat> the new pay program is going to be like and talked about uh, what uh, incentive programs we might have and that sort of thing. But there is one thing that is left out of the conversation somewhat and that is the best way to mentor an employee on the floor, a new employee, as they come in, very often they're pushed aside a little bit because they're not the, you know, they're not well known amongst the senior people. And very often they're, you know, 
kind of hands off until we get to know them a little bit better and that sort of the mentoring starts right at the very outset of hiring and it carries through as the person grows with the job if you don't have a, a solid mentoring program from some of the developed educated people in your in, in, in your employees it it's got to fall by the wayside people are not going to you know, know to give of themselves a little bit before they leave you know as far as exit interviews and they're not going to know enough about the programs because they haven't been told anything and i think that's uh, an important side to hiring and a very important side to letting people leave so I guess just all I have to say about that, but I think uh, you know, you keep that in mind. I just yeah. respond, but you can just give it one second. So at the beginning of the year, I sit down with department heads and I go over an operational plan, a vision of what I want us to do operationally. And that was a, a huge part of it this year is, is and something that me and Mark were talking about in length is that we need career paths where anybody who comes in on where they could go. And that's not always just one line. You know, you could start, if you start in the highway, you know, there's four different departments your career can grow into. You know, and we have to do a better job of having this linear uh, career path for people. And that's something that we are we are developing and, and mentoring, not only just, uh, just mentoring through their career, but also a training structure and a timeline of what I expect out of you uh, what should you know by week one? What should you know by month one? What should you know by year one? You know, and are we hitting those metrics and are we actually doing them? So that's one thing all over that. I completely agree with you. Uh, the other thing, and I just want to back up a bit, um, just to clarify a little bit on some of these public loan forgiveness, it is not degree specific. And if you have a, a degree in philosophy and you didn't get chosen to succeed Alex Trebek, and you are working in the kitchen over at Parkview, that public sector work counts for that degree too. It's not just for nurses. It's not just for LPNs. That's somebody that maybe has a political science degree that found themselves working for a highway department. You work for the highway department for 10 years. That applies for you too. I think that is a recruitment tool countywide um, that could be important as long as we do a better job of explaining that. And I think that's, in the past where we've gotten in the weeds. We haven't really explained what the benefit is on on, on some of our, our, our things. Nobody really understands what it's like to be in the Wisconsin re retirement program. And, and nobody knows that it's one of the best uh, retirement programs in the entire country, the top three, top three in the country. We don't do a good job of explaining that. We don't do a good job of explaining some of the benefits that we have. Where if we could break that down in simpler terms, I think it'd be a really great recruitment tool. Um, that's something Aurora doesn't have. I don't believe Aurora has the top three retirement program in the country. Do they, Doug? Imagine that. Imagine <laughs> not. You know, and and these are and that's some things that that me and Lindsay talked about in our interview. In our interview, she had mentioned that she I went to the uh, Facebook page of Parkview. Where was it? Like, you're not doing a good job of telling us, hey, not only is it a great place for you to send your family, it's a great place to come and work. I mean, how do we do a better job of letting people know that our care ratios are much better than the private industry, right? We've had these conversations, and this is, you know, part of the whole overall program where we're trying to bring this, this county to is how do we do a better job of telling our story and recruiting and I'm pleased with the progress we made in the last year and a half. Like I really am. I think um, the team's doing a good job. I think you've got some good ideas that, that you're brewing on. I think Mark has been very receptive on some of those ideas. Um, and I think that our timing is good because um, it's going to get a lot harder in four years. Um, and I think we are ahead of this to be proactive rather than reactive. Any county that is caught reactive in four years from now could be a lot of trouble. Uh, we are on a solid path to be ahead of that. What are you, you going to do for somebody, and maybe not so much out here, but
But what if you do somebody that comes in and starts working, I'll say at the bottom, mm -hmm. but they, and we have, we have employees that have been here a long time. They don't have a degree. Mm -hmm. They don't need a degree. And I'll go back to the highway department. Okay. So you got Bobby Dane. He was going to school to be an engineer and dropped out. And now he's, in my opinion, one of the best highway commissioners we've had in a long time. Okay. But what about Joe Smith, who starts at the highway department and he learns to operate the equipment? Say he's, you know, uh, works on the roads. He can't quite do the snow plow yet, but he sticks with it and then he jumps to the airport. And he starts working on that equipment and he maybe becomes operation manager. Still doesn't have a degree, but he's got on the job experience. So he's not worried about that tuition. And yet you want to retain somebody like that because they're working their way through. And maybe the person ends up in a totally different department, but still stays there and doesn't really need a degree yet. And that's a tuition reimbursement program that I want Mark to take a look at. Yeah, and, and we talk to employees when we make job offers and when they have questions about working for the county, where I mean, we from HR, you know, the way I'll phrase it is, you know, this particular department, you know, part of you may not like me to tell you this, but a good hire for the county is a good hire for the county because you may start in one department, but as an employer, instead of thinking of us as all these siloed individual departments with all these siloed individual specialty positions. That's not who we are. I mean, we're Winnebago County. You can work at an airport, you can work at a landfill, you can work at a nursing home, you can have an office job in human services, you can work at a mental health clinic, you can work at a crisis center, you can take 911 calls. I mean, we have such a tremendous variety. One, it makes it a hiring challenge because we do have a variety. <laughs> But the opportunity that we have, and we talk to the candidates about that, mm -hmm. uh, when they ask, you know, if I take this job, where can I go from here? Well, at least from our standpoint in HR, we try not to limit it to, well, within this particular silo, here's where you can go, because our silo is the whole thing. And that's really what we try to focus on. Well, because I don't want to leave that person out because you might lose a fantastic employee. Just wants to know if that if that's possible. Mm -hmm. And I, I truly do believe it is. Mm -hmm. Don't make yeah. that the only conversation, though. Don't make that that first interview or that final interview as you sign him and let him go out the door. Don't make that the only interview of that sort but carry it through into the department he ends up in so that those people in that department know he, his, his interests, his direction, his uh, formula for mentoring and get him together with people. And that will help keep them around because there, there is a lack of motivation and some of these people, when they start out, they only know one thing, and that's give me the bucks, give me the bucks. They've got to find something in there that keeps them motivated to the job and to moving forward. One quick question. Does tuition reimbursement um, apply to tech school graduates as well? Well, I mean, tuition reimbursement, I mean, our our program, I think in the past did. It did. Oh, it yeah. Did. I mean, because right. tech school credits are going to are gonna transfer now to the university, right? Yeah. The UW, UW system. So, yeah. you know, it's important yeah. to remember that, too. And a lot of our nurses have a technical school degree. Yeah. But they can upgrade if they want to now. They can right. take those credits and apply them to a UW degree. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, on the mentorship, though, um, we do have a person that is a CNA coordinator is her exact title, um, but she is the mentor for the CNA. So when they start on the floor, she is their mentor with them on the floor right now. 
um, it's not as formal as I would like it to be, but that's one of my goals for 2023 is to make that a more formal program. Um, but there is somebody dedicated strictly to mentor the, the CNAs on the floor right now. Our staff educator is the mentor for the nurses. She spends five full days with every new nurse that we have starting at Parkview. So we do have people in those positions. It's just not a, a very formal program that, to my expectations, I should say. By them being at most four periods of time, five days a week, whatever, they should be able to extract over that period of time what that individual really wants. Is it a secondary passive job or is it you know, learning the entire root of what they're there for? Sure. And if they're going to track in some kind of a pro professional track, learning that by your mentor, being able to divine that out of them, put it on paper, write it into a diary or whatever else, and then carry through month after month, a little at a time, you'll find out when they exit, what the true reason why they were exiting the job, if that mentor is any good. I know you want to leave, Mark, but I got one question for you. No, I'm good. I think government works too slow, but so what? How long would it take to get this implemented? Is this going to get snagged up, this tuition program for all departments? Is it going to get snagged up for a year, two years? It has to be intertwined with the, the, the wage study that we just, I mean. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily intertwined with the wage study. I, I guess what I would say is that, I mean, right now, barring specific action from the board to fund a program, I mean, we are coming up on the 2024 budget process. I mean, we're going to be starting, I mean, it seems crazy, it's still snowing out, but we're going to be starting yeah. budgets um, for next year very shortly. And, you know, I, I guess my my hope would be that um, it's something at the very least that could start to be included, you know, in next year's budget for departments. Okay. You know, just like we have, um, you know, departments will have varying training budgets for different purposes. Um, you know, I, I would see this as potentially whether it falls, um, you know, I'll defer to finance, whether it's got to fall to its own separate line item or what that looks like. But that's kind of a natural um, point. Now, obviously, if it's going to be included in the budget, that gives us some time to start working on a framework and, and what that looks like um, specifically. But I think that would at least be a natural time. Um, yeah. yeah. If I could adjust a little bit. Uh, First thing was was wage study and make sure that we get adjustments to where people are for retention and kind of clear out that hiring range. And I think is is a direction uh, we're looking to bring through PNF and then to the county board in March uh, for for wage adjustments. Uh, second kick in the can that we want to do is we want to bring um, some adjustments to consider to our merit pay. Is there a way to fix this so we don't get that compression again in five years? How do we make sure that our people are moving along the range so we don't have this compression that we have now and that frees up that hiring range in the beginning and makes us a little bit more competitive. Right now, if Lindsay has uh, somebody who's been a nurse for five years um, and what it takes to land her at Parkview puts her a little bit above somebody who's been working at Parkview for three years, that's puts you in a really hard position. So we got to free up that, that hiring range. So that'll be number two. And then number three is what we're going to look into the budget. It's probably going to take us to the budget. We finally got some really good applications in for our financial analyst position in finance. We changed it from budget manager because Carol Blackburn does a good job for the budget. So she is our uh, assistant finance director. So, so we changed that from budget director to financial analyst. We got some good applications in there. 
Uh, and that person, in theory, if it works well, is going to be able to take a look at some of these programs that are out there um, to maximize our effort and kind of look at what are, to put the data together, whatever is going to be best for us county wide. Um, I always like to say people work at Park Duo, or they work at the highway department, or they work at facilities, or they work at the airport, but they work for Winnebago County. And that is what we are trying to do to make sure that we have something on a grand scale that's making us um, the employer to work for again. And I think we're going to get there. So I would say as far as tuition reimbursement as staff, I would ask that you give us um, to the budget really to, to figure out something that's going to work well, while we can focus on some of these other things quickly and quicker. And, and I think that is the timeline that we've been talking about, right? The done is where it's at. Is that what's on your wall? It is. Yeah. <laughs> right. And is that yeah. accurately what that's we've been good. discussing on the fourth floor? Yeah. Yeah, because you have a new employee that comes to the highway department making more than somebody out there that is happening. Mm -hmm. So that person that's out there. You mean mechanic wise? Yeah, it is. Well, mechanics. I'm not going to specifically say, but there, and it's on other departments. So you've got this right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that's not good. Not good for business. No. Okay. Thank you. I think we've <laughs> talked about it. We'll, we'll look Thanks forward to you. hearing more from you at some point in time. Thank, Thank you, you very much. No problem. We'll go back to number seven, administrative report. All right. COVID outbreak. Good news. We are in a COVID outbreak. Oh. Effective yesterday. Um, so, but I'll go back for just one second because we did have a COVID outbreak in January. So, I um, just want to report on that. It was isolated to one neighborhood and was on part two. Um, that outbreak was from January 16th to February 2nd. Um, that included eight residents and nine staff. Five out of the nine staff members also worked on part two where the COVID outbreak was. So, that's done and over with. We do have another COVID outbreak that, as I just said, started yesterday. Um, currently we have four residents, um, one staff member, and the COVID unit is now open with those four residents. Uh, we opened the COVID unit because those four residents were on separate neighborhoods. So um, to keep it from spreading in two neighborhoods, we opened up the COVID unit and um, it was Prairie Side 2 and Lakeside 1, which is a memory care unit where we do have an individual who is a wanderer who would not be able to isolate in their room. So we did decide to open up that COVID unit. All the staff members on those two neighborhoods are now wearing and then five masks in order to stop the spread. Can I ask a question? What does a COVID outbreak mean? So if we have one a resident or one staff member, it's considered a COVID outbreak. For this purpose, a, a COVID outbreak would be a resident. We have a positive resident. A testing positive, do they display symptoms? Testing positive. Do they display symptoms? Correct. We can, now, we can no longer test residents who are asymptomatic. We can only test if they have symptoms. Okay. Okay. Monthly average census. So January, um, our average census was ninety six. We had eight admissions. Tom and Casey. Go to the oh, oh our average daily census. Yeah. Okay. Our average daily census is 96. But total residents in house we have is uh, 98. We had eight admissions, uh, seven discharges. We have 24 people currently on the waiting list. 
Um, as far as pay resources go, 20%, which is a great number for a nursing home, is private pay. 70% medical assistance, that's typical. 6% uh, family care, zero insurance, that's not typical. <laughs> and then three, Medicare Advantage and 2% Medicare. What is the census today? 99. And can we not admit anybody when we have a... Uh, we are not admitting anybody at this at this time. I thought that was Okay. I think we do. I know. Yeah, we don't have any. Okay. Well, you have to wait for you to admit anyone. Technically. Pardon? 10 days. Yeah. As long as we don't have any more positive residents. Or if we get a open bed on a neighborhood that has bed availability. So somebody discharges and I'll say park two. If we had somebody discharged from park two, we haven't had any positive residents on that neighborhood, we could admit to that neighborhood. That waiting list, is that for long-term care or for rehab care? Long-term care. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people looking for rehab too, because. I even got a call today wondering if we could take somebody from Wausau. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just in Wausau. And, and yeah, and just out of the blue, I've never gotten a call <laughs> from anybody looking for a uh, hospital placement. They just called me up and said, hey, are you taking anybody? <laughs> so. Um, as far as open positions go for nurses, RNs, and LPNs combined, we have 13.2 positions open. CNAs, we have 50.9 positions that are open. Hospitality aides, so hospitality aides, Tom, I know you're new to this committee, so uh, a hospitality aide is somebody who supports the CNAs, so they do all hands-off care, so they can pass linens. Um, answer call lights, pass waters, they help with meal trays, all of those kind of things. They do laundry on the floor, personal items. Um, we have 13.85 of those positions open. We've got four housekeepers and two and a half food service positions that are currently open. Uh, training center uh, updates as far as classes goes. Uh, we did have a class that was to start actually on Monday. Um, we had one person that dropped out of that class, so we have decided to cancel that class for right now. Um, we'd like to have more participants for that, so right now it's a to be determined when our next class will be. Is it training for CNAs? Or yes. It is. Yeah. Yeah. The training is for CNAs. We do have an application in with the state of Wisconsin for a paid feeding assistant program as well, too. So that would help. Um, would you just do it. CNAs then for Park View, or you, you would do CNAs, somebody that's going to be a, is the training center just going to be for training CNAs for Park View? For right now, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it could, it could expand. I think I'd have to talk with corporate counsel in regards not. to that. Yeah. yeah, I can't say anything about okay. that. But only CNA training. Right now, until we get approved for our paid feeding assistant program, then we would also do training there as well too. We've done CPR training, um, recertification there. That happened on Monday. Um, so Joel could use that for fit testing too. It's not designated just for Parkview, it's a county building. So if Joel needed to use that and it was available to fit test public health or something like that, he could utilize that training center. How about um, continuing education courses that meet this, the criteria for like somebody in nursing or to keep their license? Can we do that or is that another another separate like if you because they must have 
continuing education courses for nurses, right? And we do annual competencies with them, okay. typically. Um, not so much training. Megan probably could do it over at the training center. Right now, she's just been using one of the close neighborhoods okay. because it's for convenience. Yeah. Um, just to grab them after their shift and okay. or pull them off the unit for 10 minutes to do a competency quick. So was there only one signed up in that class that you closed? There was um, three and one dropped out. So for a first time, you didn't think that was worthwhile just to run? Because once that been your first class? No, it would have been our second. Well, you said that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our first class, we had four. We had four people. Um, two of them are CNAs and two went back to college. So they'll be back in the summertime, but we'll be able to use them immediately when they come back on summer break. You don't think these tools will some other place? I'm just asking. I don't think so. They're both hospitality aides in at the nursing home right now. Good. Okay. Survey updates. Survey updates. We just had an annual survey. <laughs> they came in on Monday morning at 8 a.m. They exited yesterday afternoon. Uh, we had five surveyors, one federal surveyor. And then on Wednesday, we also had an addition of somebody from DHS from Madison. And then also the regional field officer for DQA also came on Wednesday. So um, it was a lot of fun and a lot of people. Um, so uh, we just had preliminary uh, results at this time because they have 10 days to give us our statement of deficiency. So as of right now, preliminary, we have three health citations. We're hoping that comes down to two. Um, Life safety came in on Tuesday. Um, Steve Kismore was the surveyor. I have never met him before, um, but he came in. He gave us, I, he couldn't tell me a number, but I counted and it looks like a potential seven. We are trying to get that down to four. So we're, we're sending in some additional information to him. Just so and Tom understands, when they come for these, you don't know when they're coming, no. do you? Yes, it's unannounced. Yeah. Oh, they do send. Oh, no, okay. it's unannounced. Unannounced. Correct. Unannounced is very any, like any any time between November and once the end of uh, April. April. They could come anytime. And, and I do want to say, uh, I remember when I was first county executive, and and it was uh, before Lindsay. Uh, we we had these in the past, and historically. We never reported citations to the board. And I always wanted to be open and honest. So I remember the first time we had that, we told everybody of the citations we got, and it was how terrible. We've never had these before. Well, in fact, we did. So I really, you know, appreciate the fact that, you know, that now the process is open, transparent, that you guys are able to hear them. Um, Lindsay let me know as soon as the surveyors were there when I was in DC um, and gave good updates throughout the the entire process and and um, the, these are easily fixable, but I'm very pleased that we are, I was pleased to see that this was in the report that we're going to continue to let you know how surveys go, um, just because the fact that we didn't say it for a few years doesn't mean that they weren't happening. So, At one you. point in time, many years ago, we had a, you call it surveyor, I call it inspector, was a ceiling tile person. We had ceiling tile that weren't flat down in a room, like one was up, that was a citation, because that was dangerous. So it can vary what you're doing, and it's like, oh, you gotta be kidding, but they had to find something. Well, that's kind of what happened with life safety. Yeah. <laughs> one of the sprinkler uh, silver circles were just down a bit. Oh, one of these citations. Yeah. <laughs> and then you adjust, and then do you tell them that you've done that, or do you have to show them? I'll just, uh, well, we have to write up a plan of correction. Okay. I'll send in a photograph that it's fixed as gone supporting documentation. And yeah. I mean, we still have the citation, but it's fixed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fixed. 
door <clears throat> 517 didn't latch 100% out of the thousands of doors we have at Parkview. Wow. That was a citation. <laughs> you have to roll with all that. Yeah. So we just, yeah, we roll with it. Rodents in the kitchen. Oops. Rodents in DC. We're not kidding about that. <laughs> like I said, they got to find something. Yeah. All right. Any, um, any other questions on that? Or... Okay. So those are preliminary. Next meeting, I'll have the statement of deficiency, so we can go over it a little bit more in detail. But um, project updates, water heaters, we talked a little bit about that to, um, earlier. But just to recap, they did a pre-bid walkthrough today. Bids are due March 2nd. Um, dishwasher that has been ordered. I'm looking at a ship date right now of mid-May, so probably I'm going to guess install. Give them a couple weeks, probably June. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the AV projection, I think last meeting we talked a little bit about this, the Excel technology company that we got the bid from previously um, no longer provides the AV um, equipment things anymore. They did have an employee that started his own business um, doing audio and visual. So he did come in and do a walkthrough. Uh, we're waiting on a quote. Sounds like he's gonna send it to us on Monday. So hopefully that stays within budget still. We go up for bid on that? Yep. Okay. Ooh, it's gonna be over <clears throat> 10 dollars I'm sure. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, did, did we have budget? Did we spend already on that? What's that? Did we spend already? No. You bring that you didn't bring that to us. No, no, nothing. It was it hasn't. <clears throat> we're just we're just getting a for per preliminary. <clears throat> He's giving us a quote basically to get what we need okay. so and that so we can use that stuff. to go out to bed. Mm -hmm. See, I can't remember, or, or Doug, did we, was this in the budget this year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This has so already been budgeted. To answer your question, that's it's yeah, already it's there. Yeah. But you've got a broad range. Yeah. He doesn't know that amount. No. Okay. Not yet. No. no. <laughs> so you can get away with you can get away with uh, getting a quote without having them know the ceiling of the quote. Or the oh ceiling yeah. Of the, yeah. The, they they don't know what what we have budgeted. Right. Yeah. No. I believe that was the same guy that you know from the Excel yeah. technology. Yeah. So, so yeah. he's familiar he knows, with He the knows projects. what they did last time. So many quotes go out and they've already got yeah. in their mind uh, 250000 or whatever yeah. else. Yeah, but you can't get them to bid if you don't set that. Well, that's, I give them, a, I give them understand an idea. That. Yeah. I get in pr trouble with Mike because. <laughs> Go after him about that. All right. We did eight, nine suggested topics for next time. You're going to give us a survey update again. Probably the AV situation. Yeah. Yep. Training center will leave up there in case we got any new and exciting things. And then you can. Talk to Kobe about the rest of them. Anybody here have any suggested items that you want to? If you do, talk to Kobe or Lindsay and make it happen. All right. Next meeting, March 18th, 2023 at 3 30. We're um, trying to keep it on the third Thursday. Third Thursday, right? 16th. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 16th. My bad. Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion to make and second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.